I'm Susie, and I have a story to tell you. So there I was last winter, eating my lunch, when all of a sudden, I began to wonder about the food on my plate. Ah, food. We all love food. It's delicious and nourishing. We use it to show love and celebrate important traditions. We grow it, cook it, process it, and ship it all over the world. And there I was in the Northern Hemisphere in January with a salad of lettuce and tomatoes. And I was curious, what's the story here? Where did it all come from? Who grew it? How did they grow it? How did they water it? Who picked it? Who packaged it? How far did it travel on a truck? The questions kept adding up and I realized I had some serious homework to do. As I began my investigation into that winter salad, I started to notice a lot of buzz around food in the news. On the one hand, I heard about tainted peanut butter and cantaloupes, genetically modified crops, pink slime, increased rates of obesity and diabetes, water contamination, topsoil loss, and the overuse of antibiotics in raising farm animals. Yikes. On the other hand, I heard about food hubs, farm to school projects, local foods, an increase in farmers markets and community supported agriculture, and the concept of sustainable food systems. It seemed to me that there were different systems in place that could have contributed to my salad, and the rest of our food for that matter. So that seemed like a good place to start. On one end of the spectrum is the industrial food system. This large-scale food system has done some amazing good. For example, it has increased productivity while decreasing food costs to the consumer. But over time, those successes have unfortunately come with some serious downsides. Rural communities around the world are losing their agricultural livelihoods because they cannot compete with these large-scale methods, commodity system, and markets. Food production has become anonymous. Meanwhile, people in wealthier nations, like the United States, are getting sick from this abundance of low-priced and often highly processed, low-quality food that they can't even track back to the farms and facilities that produced it. These downsides get compounded because the large-scale industrial methods are eroding our soils and polluting our waterways. Hence, some of that less-than-fabulous news about food I was hearing. On the other end of the spectrum are regional and local food systems that are putting a face back on our food. There are people all over the country starting to reconnect to their local sources of food and finding out that it tastes better, is healthier, and keeps their economies stronger and their landscapes more attractive and diverse. People are starting to get to know where their meals come from through regional systems that are replacing anonymity with accountability. There are more people buying directly from diversified farms every year and bands of young, innovative farmers that are growing for this food system and thriving. I started noticing more CSAs and farmers markets and restaurants featuring local foods everywhere I looked. And I was encouraged, but I was still confused. I kept hearing the term food system, but didn't actually know what it meant. So I did some more homework. Lo and behold, it is not as simple as you'd think. Turns out that people often confuse the term food system with what is just a profit-driven system of production and consumption. That's the way that food is grown, processed, distributed, marketed, consumed, and disposed of. But this production model falls woefully short when considering the multitude of factors that go into sustaining a healthy person and a healthy planet. It's really more layered and complex than that. Several additional factors need to be considered to understand the full impact of the food system, including the social and cultural aspects, the environmental impacts, the economic aspects, and the diet and health implications. Now that I've planted the seed, let's look at a few examples in each of these areas to give you a better idea of what I mean. In social, we have food traditions, treatment of farm workers, and taste and flavor. In environmental, there are farming practices, land use, topsoil loss, and climate change. The economics looks at the consumer's food costs, trade policies, and crop subsidies. And the diet and health category includes diet-related diseases, hunger, and food safety. And that, of course, is just to name a few. The seed way of looking at our food system allowed me to make some sense of this complex web. All of a sudden, I could look at a can of soda and see that it was much more than a drink. It actually involves relationships between government food policy, what is grown, what is produced, and the health and cultural consequences of what is consumed. Once I started looking at the food system this way, I started wondering how our food system got this complicated in the first place. Lucky for me, there are a lot of smart people out there who have already asked this question. What I found out is that we've arrived at the current industrial system of food production because of several factors driving the industry, including 
government policies, and increasing corporate consolidation. But what does that all mean? In the industrial food system, consolidation is not just happening within individual sectors along the supply chain, but a few large multinational corporations are controlling more and more of the entire process. They own or control the seeds, the farms, the trucks, the processing plants, the brands, and the grocery stores. It's called vertical integration. Yikes! This is why the food you find at the grocery store is relatively cheap. But before you get too excited about cheap food, because that would be looking at only the economic aspect and not the whole seed picture, remember all those other areas we talked about. My guess is that once you start looking at it that way, it will get complicated pretty quickly. Even if we just look deeper into the economic aspects, you'll see that there are other costs, such as pollution cleanup, treating illness, maintaining infrastructure, and different kinds of taxes that you and your community pay for indirectly. Ah, what else don't I know about our food system? In my search for the story behind my salad, remember that salad? I looked at tons of resources and found some amazing statistics on our food system. And I thought you'd like to know. 50% of all groceries in this country are purchased at four supermarket chains. Among children ages 2 to 19 in the U.S., about one in three are overweight and obese. Around the world, soil is being eroded way faster than it is being replenished, destroying over 36,000 square miles of cropland each year. That is the size of Indiana. Your average carrot in the U.S. travels 1,835 miles to reach the dinner table on a truck that consumes fossil fuels and emits CO2 all along the way. There are over 800,000 farm workers in the U.S., many of whom work in dangerous conditions that get paid significantly less than minimum wage. In the U.S., our system of food production and distribution results in 40% of food grown being lost through spoilage. So, the industrial food system is controlled by a handful of corporations, makes our children sick, erodes our soils, pollutes our air and water, mistreats farm workers, and wastes almost half the food it produces. Ick, I think I just lost my appetite. This salad may be cheap to buy, but it's not the salad I was hoping for. And as I learned, it's not the only salad I can eat. Like I mentioned before, there is an alternative food system that is alive and thriving across the country. So all this question asking made me realize that, one, there is a complicated and important story behind every plate of food. And two, it is my responsibility as a consumer in the food system to think about the seed framework when choosing which food to buy. And that involves asking a lot of questions. It turns out that here in Vermont, I am surrounded by savvy and smart food systems experts. Vermont has become a leader in the area of local and regional food systems, largely because its mountainous terrain has limited large-scale production. But it is also Vermont's legislative initiatives coupled with a university and colleges committed to research and innovation in the food system, an abundance of entrepreneurial farmers, and a plethora of informed consumers already thinking the seed way that have turned Vermont into a hotbed of innovation in the field. This expertise is also being shared around the world. And it's not just Vermonters who are working towards a more sustainable food system. It's a bona fide national and international movement. And there's a true sense of urgency and momentum behind it. From our dwindling supply of oil to resource depletion to chronic disease, the reasons for change are endless. The most effective way to make that positive change in our food system is to work from both ends of the spectrum. On one side, we need more transparency and accountability from corporations to include some of the externalized costs. And on the other side, we need regional food systems and local diversified farms distributing fresh food. Informed consumers are in the middle, driving the change, and also putting pressure on the government to protect the planet and create healthier food and communities. To accelerate the move to a healthier food system, we need to cultivate innovative leaders who can chart a course for a more sustainable future where food is abundant and healthy and accessible to all. It sounds like we have our work cut out for us. But while we are busy working on this food revolution, let's be sure to slow down and take time to cook and eat together. Now that I've done my homework, my January salads look a lot different than last year's. I've replaced the lettuce and tomato with kale, beets, apples, and local cheese. It is delicious and has a story I love to tell. But that's me. What's on your plate? 
So what can you do to help move us towards a more sustainable food system? Here are a few ideas. Be curious about where your food comes from. Learn about the different companies that produce food and what their practices are so you can make informed choices. You can learn or surmise a lot just from reading labels. Advocate for transparency and labeling. You have the right to know where your food is coming from and how it was grown and processed. If it was irradiated or grown with GMO seeds, you should know that. Try to shorten the distance between where most of your food is grown and you. It will be fresher and taste better and will have used less fuel to get to you. Eat and cook with an emphasis on fresh whole foods. And don't forget, ask lots of questions. There's always more to learn about what's on your plate.